you have what it takes to be a true follower of God? What does it take in our lives to be able to stand when everyone else wants to quit? Stay tuned and we will see how one man transformed or you could say reinvented himself to be able to walk into a victorious life that he was called into. Joshua was a man that physically was a strong warrior. He could make a split decision in the midst of battle to gain the victory. But I have to ask, how is that possible? I believe by the greatest trait that Joshua walked in is how he could do it. He had a true heart for God, and for this reason, God began to groom him for the work that he was calling him into. But what we must do is take a moment and note this process, because if we can understand the process that Joshua was going through, we as well can learn to walk into that place where we will not quit, to where we will walk victorious as that warrior that's going into battle, because that's just what we are in. We are in a battle. It's a spiritual battle that each one of us fight and we fight that on a daily basis but note what God commanded Moses to do he commanded Moses to mentor Joshua specifically to speak into this young man's life but let's note this because if we can see how this works it's sometimes kind of subtle but yet at times it speaks so profoundly we read in Exodus 17:14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial to the, in the book and recount it in the ear of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. The greatest threat was Amalek and his people. And what we see is God assuring Joshua there was no need to fear. Uh, Moses was to speak into his life. He was to, to bring that knowledge to Joshua that God was giving him a promise that there was no reason to fear. But when we get into Joshua in his, in his book, we see the first thing that God did was to ease his fear and to know that God was with him. But from this moment on, we see that Joshua was by Moses' sides being built every single day. Moses was speaking in his life continually. He, he now made a shift, Joshua did, from being a warrior to being a minister to Moses. He's seen everything that Moses was going through. He's seen everything that God was doing through Moses. So Joshua now was moving into being a true follower, one that was humbling himself to be a servant. He was learning how to wait. He was learning how to seek God's will. And he was learning how to be content in them positions where he all he could do was wait. It is only in this place that we will be able to rest in the glory. And that's what is so spectacular in the scriptures we're about to look at. Because we see in these scriptures that we do not hear very often of, but they're very powerful. Uh, note this, it's in Exodus 24, and verses 9 through 11. Then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in the clarity. But on the nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand. So they saw God, and they ate, and they drank. Now, as we look at this, it's pretty exciting, because what we realize is that we think only Moses was in this position. But here we see these other people that were involved in this. And many think it was only Moses then that went up uh, and, and left the camp and journeyed up Sinai to meet with God. But in reality, there was actually 74 people who went up that mountain, according to Exodus 24. But what that does to me is really makes me think, you know, so many times we get the idea it's only about the leadership that has the right to walk into that position. But that's not true, because what we see here is we see a servant that went up as in Joshua, and we see all the elders that went up. So it wasn't just as, as you might say, a one man show. This was Moses and, and all these leaders going up and having the opportunity to sit before God. I think this would have, uh, to me, been an awesome scene. I mean, think about this. Here was a dinner that was taking place on this mountain. Now, where all the food came from, I have no idea how this all worked. I, I don't even want to speculate. But what I do see is a beautiful picture of the marriage supper of the Lamb here. And, and to me, that's exciting when I look at this because everything wasn't provided for them by men. It was provided by God. So to me, it's exciting to see this. But now, with all that in mind, let, let's do something different here. Let's focus now in this scene, not so much on the dinner, but let's begin to focus on Joshua through this. 
In Exodus 24 and 12 through 14, we read this. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. There's a few things here that stand out that we really need to see. The first one is this. These elders were commanded to stay until Moses returned. They were to sit in, in fellowship together. They were to seek God. They were to worship. They were to just be in communion together. We know, though, they disobeyed this command for the fact that in Exodus 32 and 17 through 20, we only read of Moses and Joshua walking down that mountain. It makes me wonder how long these uh, elders sat waiting by uh, that table, waiting in, the, in that communion. But I think one by one they got discouraged, and one by one they must have thought that, that Moses wasn't coming back. And because of that, that disobedience, it started going from person to person to person until there was nobody left of those 70 people, and they leave now in disobedience. The second thing we must note is that God now calls Moses up. And what is also interesting is that in this, Joshua, even though he was not called, he still went up with Moses. Now, we may speculate some reasoning why Joshua went up. Um, there's many views that we could take. But I, my opinion is this. I, I believe that Joshua had such a heart for God, and God was going to allow him now to walk into the rest of his glory. And, and to me, that, that is an awesome thing, to realize that when we have such a heart for God, when, when we're seeking him and hungering after him and walking in obedience and surrender, we see that it gives us that a blessing and opportunity to walk into that glory. Know what we read in Exodus 24 and 15 through 18. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the clouds covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Now, what's interesting, we never learn of what happened to Joshua. If we have to, to look at this and realize this is what's taking place, we have to realize that by what we see in Joshua here gives us the answer to the question, what does it take to be a true follower? Uh, when we ask that question, we see the answer to that right here. The scripture never tells us exactly what happened to Joshua in all this. We know in Exodus 24, 16, Moses and Joshua sat on the, that mountain in the glory for six days, and then Moses was called up higher. I do not believe that Joshua went all the way up with Moses. There's no indication of that. We never read of him being in there when Moses spoke with God over the next few chapters. But I do believe wherever Moses sat for those six days is where Joshua stayed for another 40 days. And he stayed there in prayer and worship. And, and to me, it's exciting because the question is, why did Moses allow him to go with him all the way up there then just to make him park right there and, and, and and just uh, just sit there for 40 days. I believe it's this. There's maybe two answers to this. The first, he was being tested as the other 70 to see if he would stay and, and be obedient. Yet in Joshua, there was no quit. Uh, Joshua was not a quitter. He was not giving up. Joshua was a warrior to the core. He would fight with every ounce of his courage and strength to win the victory for the Father. To be it a physical battle or a spiritual battle, Joshua was not quitting. The second thing I believe might be this. Uh, it may be that God, knowing that Joshua was his next leader, wanted him to experience the power and the beauty of his glory. And I think this is where it gets exciting.
Because what happens is that when we seek the glory, we seek a greater relationship with Him. We we seek to come into that that realm where it's just me and God, and we commune together. And it goes back in my mind to uh, to Psalms 91, 1 and 2, where I walk into that secret place. Joshua, I believe, now was sitting in that secret place. There, there's no question about that. He he was soaking in the glory and allowing God to work through it. It makes me wonder how relieved Moses then was when he started down the mountain and he's seeing Joshua just a, a few minutes down the path. I, I think that had to just um, just elate Moses to no end for the fact that jo- Joshua would never leave his side. What, what a trust there was between these two. But Joshua shows us what a true follower looks like. He shows us how to stand when everyone else wants to walk away. What we see now is that one kept focus on the Lord. He sat in the glory, and by sitting in that glory, it led him to greater blessings. But as we look at the other group we took their, who took their eyes off the Lord, walking away from the glory into the obedience to where the flesh drove them to judgment. Uh, it's sad to see people in that situation, but what it does do is this. It causes us to ask ourselves, do you have what it takes to sit in obedience when everyone else wants to walk away? That is a question only we can answer. Until the next time, stay in the Word.